Pokemon have a lot of moves. Some use mouths and some use hooves. Today let's cover the electric type. Maybe this vid won't be ill, sick tripe. Have you ever licked a 9 volt battery? It hurts a little. Have you ever stuck a fork into an electrical socket? It hurts quite a bit. You ever get struck by lightning? There's a good chance you didn't survive. Electricity causes pain in two ways. First of all, it tends to be hot, thus it causes burns, hurting the same way that fire hurts. Well, you know, the fire doesn't actually hurt, it's the heat that it's associated with. Heat hurts! But also, we humans, along with animal life, actually run on electricity. That's why we need to consume electrolytes. Right now, take your arm and move it. That that's your brain sending an electrical signal to make the muscles in your arm move. Neat stuff! Granted, the amount of electricity here is extremely minimal, but it does go into why getting shocked hurts. Have you ever had a cramp in your lower leg that lasts ages? It hurts tremendously! So now, if you're getting zapped enough, then all of your muscles are receiving an electrical signal to flex as much as they physically can. In some cases, it's like your entire body is cramping at once. Ouch! No wonder then so many electric moves can cause paralysis. So that's how the moves work in the grand scheme of things, but how do Pokemon generate electricity? Well, that's a whole video on its own, and that's right here. So check it out if you're interested. For now though, let's go over all of the electric type moves and explain what they do and how they do. Sometimes. Fun stuff! I feel it to be fair to start with all of the thunder moves. I mean, it's the most iconic look of electricity in the wild. Eels can suck it. These moves are thunder, thunder punch, thunder shock, thunder wave, thunder bolt, and thunder fang. But now, how by how, but how what? The how does thunder hurt? Lightning strikes. Thunder louds and is scary, but that's not at all what we're shown. These attacks all show lightning, electricity, enter confusion. But maybe not, because historically the Japanese word for thunder is also their word for lightning. Kaminari, and I'm probably mispronouncing that. Later on though, there were words that specify which, but at first they were just the same, just like with mouse and rat, same word for both. Thunder is the most basic of names for electric moves. It's where a wicked thunderbolt is dropped on the target to inflict damage. This may also leave the target with paralysis. So let's just take a moment to laugh at thunderbolts for just being a weaker version of thunder. <laughs> Okay, now, thunder is actually the sound that you hear during storms. The sound is the result of large amounts of energy being released and creating sound. It's similar to sonic booms. When a plane goes faster than sound, it starts to sound like thunder too, because it's similar in concept. Lightning itself can create thunder too. The lightning literally cracks the air apart. So once the lightning is finished and it's gone, the air has to fill in that empty space super quickly, creating the booming explosion of vibration that we perceive as sound. So again, Again, thunder isn't electricity, it's the sound often made by it. But most of the thunder moves are from the earlier game generations, mainly Gen 1, and thunder does sound cooler than lightning in terms of naming schemes, so I'll give them a pass. Most people relate thunder with lightning anyway, which is why thunder, in many games, is considered an electrical element thing instead of a sound-based attack. So whenever these games say thunder, just assume that it means the name is moved after the sound it makes, rather than the actual thing doing the damage, which is lightning. But back to the move thunder, it's not the most accurate thing. Similar to how lightning coming from clouds is also, I mean look at it, it's not the most accurate thing. However, if it is raining, the accuracy goes up. Thunderstorms by themselves are pretty dangerous, but sometimes when those thunderstorms are combined with rain, well, the zippy zap goes all over the place. It's easier for it to actually strike the ground as opposed to just missing and going somewhere else in the sky. And I'm pretty sure the move thunderbolt sort of just clears all that up. It is a bolt of thunder. That's not a thing. A bolt of lightning is. Lightning makes thunder. That should clear up the confusion fusion, right? But then we get to moves like Thunder Wave. You would think that if any move were to be associated with sound damage, it'd be this one. I mean, Thunder Wave? A sound wave caused by thunder? If you're close enough to the sound of thunder, it can shatter windows and hurt ears. This move has the user launch a weak jolt of electricity that paralyzes the target. It's a guaranteed paralysis, rather than the previous two moves just being a chance of paralysis. But let's go ahead and specify some paralysis factoids. Paralysis is when a thing that normally moves under its own power is now unable to move. In the case of organic tissue like muscles, zaps normally overload their normal processes, which makes them contract violently, locking them in place. Think of a taser. They work by contracting the muscle groups, with the primary goal of getting the person to fall over. They can't move their legs for a while, so they trip up. But here's a fun fact. You can actually train yourself to resist tasers. <laughs> They'll still hurt, but you can still move, albeit a bit slower. It takes a lot of practice or just bath salts. 
Yeah, we're talking about drugs. Kid-friendly my butt. Also, there are plenty of clothing options that can render you resistant or immune to tasers too, so they can't get to your skin. Which is, uh, <laughs> not to get political or anything. But that's why people who suggest taking guns away from police officers are usually laughed at. Because like, oh, now suddenly being dressed for winter is the equivalent of military defensive outfits for a taser. Yeah, you want that? Granted, officers should always have both and should always prefer using a taser first. But you know, back to Pokemon. Plenty of electrical moves are able to cause paralysis because of the electricity associated with the moves, because they're electric moves and all. Uh, where were we? Right, let's look at Thundershock. A jolt of electricity crashes down on the target to inflict damage. This may also leave the target with paralysis. Pretty lackluster compared to the other Thunder moves. However, this one in Japanese is more properly named Electric Shock. Now, one would hope that Thunder Punch is just a punch so fast it explodes in crackles of lightning and thunder, but it's actually just a normal punch, but there's electricity in the fist. Same goes for Thunder Fang but with teeth instead of a fist. Which sounds much harder to direct current through. I imagine- Ugh. I can't even say it without being squeamish. Imagine that feeling of biting down on a loose ball of tinfoil. It'd be like that. Ugh. With Bolt Beak, the user stabs the target with its electrified beak. And if the user attacks before the target, the power of the move is doubled. It's simple, just like the other two. But up next is Spark, where the user throws an electrically charged tackle at the target. This may also leave the target with paralysis. You would think that this description would be for Volt Tackle, but it's Spark, which is something energy does when it wants to change locations. And if the air between the two objects that it wants to change from is small enough and the resistance is less, then sparking or arcing happens. Then Volt Tackle has the user electrify itself and charge at the target, but it also damages the user quite a lot, and also of course may leave the target with paralysis. So by touching the target it takes damage to itself. If you saw our video on how electric type Pokemon would work, then you know that the energy has to come from the Pokemon that's generating it, meaning that it then directs the electricity into the other creature, meaning it has to use specific spots on its body that are designed for that in order to avoid damage to itself, such as, for instance, a high capacitance finger, or tentacle, or a cute red cheek. Basically, it has to use a weapon appendage of sorts in order to not always hurt itself. The few animals that attack other animals with electricity in the real world don't have that, like the electric eel. It hurts itself every time it uses electricity. It must be using Volt Tackle always, because with Volt Tackle, it's just the user recklessly hitting the target with a tackle, meaning they're just slamming their bodies into the other one, meaning that the electricity is coming out of the user through its less defensive parts. It's hurting itself too. It only hurts the opponent more, though, because electric Pokemon resist electricity, so it resists its own electricity. This is where the difference of Spark and Volt Tackle start. Spark has the energy jump from a predetermined part of the user onto the target via close proximity to arc to it, which does mean that that move is going to be a bit weaker because moving through the air weakens electricity. Air is a resistor, but with Volt Tackle, it's direct, hence all the damage. It's reckless. Another move that is very similar is Wild Charge, where the user shrouds its itself in electricity and smashes into its target. This also damages the user a little, so very similar to Volt Tackle, same concept, but the move named simply Charge isn't so wild. It uses the other definition of charge, because instead of damaging the enemy, it boosts the power of the electric move the user uses on the next turn. It also raises the user's special defense stat, basically surrounding itself in a field of energy. Another move, Bolt Strike, also has the user surround itself with a great amount of electricity and charge at the target. Huh. Are there only three things you can come up with? My gosh! This may also leave the target with paralysis. Uh, again, very similar to all the other moves. The only difference being self-damage isn't here this time. But also, this is the signature move of Zekrom, unless you count that one random event Victini that knew it. The heck. But it makes sense that this legendary wouldn't be damaged by its own immense power. The master of electricity. I mean, clearly. This move even has the highest base damage of all electric attacks. Unlike Nuzzle, which is a much less aggressive move. The user attacks by nuzzling its electrified cheeks against the target. This also leaves the target with paralysis. Basically, the Pikachu clone or Yamper rub their face all cute-like on the enemy, but because it has electrified cheeks, it causes paralysis. Electro Ball! A move that anime Pikachu uses way too much. Likely because they have one or two stock Electro Ball animations and they can easily just reuse them over and over. I don't know. With this move, the user hurls an electric orb at the target. The faster the user is than the target, the greater the move's power. So there's this thing called Ball Lightning, which is really cool. It's a rather common, rare, oh, current. 
<laughs> Wherein lightning will hit a pocket of air that is charged differently, thus illuminating it like a large candle in the sky. I think Game Freak just sort of ran with the idea. Sort of like the new Reggie Lightning. Zap Cannon is a move that sounds pretty ridiculous, but it's pretty much what you think it is. The user fires an electric blast like a cannon to inflict damage and cause paralysis. I mean, shooting electricity balls is already a thing in Pokemon, so why not make it a cannonball blast, huh? Now, Electro Web is a weird thing for a Pikachu to learn, but okay. The user shoots a web that is sticky and charged with electrical energy, lowering the opponent's speed like every other web attack. However, this one is unique at least. I mean, it's an electrically charged net. That sounds pretty cool. It's like laying a bunch of tasers or an electric fence on the ground. Shock Wave. The user strikes the target with a quick jolt of electricity. This attack never misses. A lot of these moves have been saying jolt, and it just dawned on me that I actually don't quite know what the definition of a jolt is. I mean, I know joltic, but uh. So, a jolt is an abrupt or rough movement. If you jolted, you recoiled similar to how you jump when you get scared. Normally, a jolt means a small amount of disturbance, so a jolt of electricity is a small zap that makes you react abruptly. Like when you plug a vacuum cleaner into the wall and it sparks at you. Well, that's, that's not good. But you jolted. Jolts could also be here specifying muscles contracting by themselves because of the electrical impulse messing with your muscles, causing hurt, which I'm sure is the case here. Anyway, another move with the word charge is charge beam. A simple move that is just a beam of electrical energy, unlike a bolt of lightning. But I'm sure the beam is much more focused. The move states, the user attacks with an electric charge. The user may use any remaining electricity to raise its special attack stat. So wait, is the beam charging themselves, or is it a beam of charged energy? Well, it's both. A charged beam that charges them. Don't ask me how that works. Surprisingly, there are a lot of magnetic Pokemon, but there aren't many magnetic-like moves. There is Magnet Rise, though. The user levitates using electrically generated magnetism for five turns, which is great for getting rid of that ground-type weakness. But it's not super weird for a magnet to be an electric-based move, because most magnets are already electrical in nature. You see, whenever there is a magnetic field with some wire or metal nearby, the magnet creates an electrical current. It's basic complicated stuff. The reverse is also true. Current flowing through wires will create electromagnetic fields. So if you're an electric-type Pokemon, and you have some sort of metal, or I guess organic wires, then you can push current through them to create a field of electromagnetic energy, which then grants you the ability to push against the Earth's magnetic field to levitate, basically explaining all of Magnezone. Similarly, the move Magnetic Flux is where the user manipulates magnetic fields, which raises the defense and special defense stats of ally Pokemon with the plus or minus ability. Basically, it's changing the local magnetic field and resonating with Pokemon of the correct type to boost their ability to deflect all types of attacks with their own electromagnetic fields. But what is Flux? Flux is the action of increasing flow or decreasing flow. So it's increasing or decreasing the field's charge, making it more energized? Simple, complicated stuff. Fusion Bolt is another interesting move. The user throws down a giant lightning bolt. This move's power is increased when influenced by an enormous flame. This is the signature move of Zekrom and Black Kyurem, along with that stupid event Victini. And this move is amplified if the move Fusion Flame was used just before it. Being based off of fusion energy, Fusion Bolt blasts the target with a huge amount of power, I'm assuming generated by the power of fusion, which is basically what Reshiram and Zekrom's tails do. It's a process of generating electricity that also creates a lot of heat and fire, hence the two of them, and it does this via nuclear fusion. Being amplified by fusion flame is a game mechanic first of all, but also makes sense considering how hot the fusion process is. Plus, I mean, if you're already damaged by fire, then the burning of electricity would hurt even more, and vice versa. But without the heat, fusion isn't really possible. In fact, we don't even know how to achieve fusion without the heat, so the bolt would actually be much less powerful if the fusion flame wasn't used previously. Uh, notably, this all just further points to the origins of these Pokemon being one original dragon at first. It was a dragon of fusion. Fusion creates flaming heat and electricity, so it needs a coolant to not explode. Neat. There's also a whole bunch of alchemy stuff involved. Video about that here. It's one of my favorites. Shameless plug. I should be dishonorably discharged. Ha ha ha. Discharge is one of those moves that seems odd, but also makes sense. I mean, if you can charge, you have to be able to decharge, right? The user strikes everything around it by letting loose a flare of electricity. This may also cause paralysis. Unlike most of the other moves, discharge is attacking with no specific target. It's just letting go of all of its charged up electric energy, hoping to strike the target 
target, which is why the attack hits all adjacent Pokémon, even your allies. The electricity just goes wild sometimes. Similarly, the new move Overdrive is an electrically charged shockwave, and it actually is sound-based, so it's a sound wave, but with electricity. A shock wave. Good job on the naming scheme there, Game Freak. It's the signature move of Toxtricity. It attacks the opposing Pokémon by twanging a guitar or bass guitar on its chest, causing a huge echo and strong vibration. And of course, being that this is a sound wave, it hits all of the Pokémon in the battle as well. Unless, of course, they are soundproof. But, uh, getting hit by this move is probably like, I don't know, imagine going to a concert and anybody listening to the music gets just a tickle of electricity that slowly builds until it hurts. Big oof. Basically, this move seems to be like Toxtricity using the move Discharge while simultaneously creating a sonic boom blast of sound, which then carries all that electricity through the air. Simple, complicated stuff. Volt Switch is the boon of all Electric-type Pokémon. After making its attack, the user rushes back to switch places with a party Pokémon in waiting. Super good, very annoying move. Love it. It's basically based on how Lightning is always moving around and is very fast. It's almost instantaneous, even. So of course, it's fitting for Electric Pokémon to be able to do this. Plus, it's a really good pun, because the word Switch is a term used in electrical engineering stuff. So if any type was to get a move with Switch in the name, Electric is the type to do it. Speaking of engineering and math, Parabolic Charge is also an interesting move, in the naming side of things. The user attacks everything around it. The user's HP is restored by half of the damage taken by those hit. So basically, it's using the whole parabolic curves are mirrors analogy to have the negative damage and the positive healing. Though they reduced the healing to not make it too unbalanced. Either that, or maybe the designers are actually math gods and knew that the damage could be based off of the focus point, whereas the amount healed would have to have been the vertex of the curve. Uh, oh, and with it being a large curve, it hits all adjacent targets. No discrimination here, it's big. And uh, if you understand anything I just said there, let me know, because I didn't. New move! Remember late nights when you were all in bed and cozy and nice and almost asleep, but then you could hear the refrigerator kick on, and it sounded like a demon coming to eat your feet? Well, a lot of sounds can be spooky. Eerie impulse is one of them. The user's body generates an eerie impulse. Exposing the target to it harshly lowers the target's special attack stat. Similar to many moves in Pokemon, this is using the fact that special attack is related to special abilities that normally take focus to use. You can't just willy-nilly shoot water or fire or whatever. You gotta direct it. And so if you are unnerved or uneasy, it's harder to focus as easily. Therefore, the attacks won't be as good. Hence, special attack lowering. But here's a fun fact for you. Most people can hear electricity. It is electrons moving, after all. That means they are vibrating. And vibrations in the air happen to be what sound is. In fact, every region has its own little tune or frequency that the electricity sounds like, as different regions have different standards for voltage. North America's is 60 hertz. And also, some people can hear the Earth's hum. It's a very low sound that only about 4% of people are able to hear. Some theorize it to be a neurological sound or a difference beat, two frequencies merging from afar into one, but a few theorize that this sound that some people can hear is actually the magnetic field. Yeah, as in THE magnetic field, the one that's completely around the Earth. They are able to actually hear the electrical displacement of the planet. It's pretty creepy when you think about this deep 18 hertz sound that you feel more than you hear, making you think you can hear it. Oof. Electric Terrain is actually a very self-explanatory name. It makes the terrain electrically charged. The user electrifies the ground for five turns, powering up electric-type moves. Pokémon on the ground can no longer fall asleep. So the stronger electric moves make sense, but what's with the not being able to sleep? Well, I mean, could you sleep if you were amped up with energy? Or if any part of you touching the ground was being tickled with electricity? Didn't think so. Fun fact again! The Earth itself can actually be charged negatively. We all say we're grounded when we don't have a charge, but that's why energy goes to the Earth. It's normally negative. That's why lightning tends to strike the Earth, after all. Balance and all that. Similarly, the move Electrify is where you make a different move Electric-type. You use Electrify on another Pokémon before they use their move, and then, when they use it, it counts as it being Electric-type. So while Electric Terrain makes the ground electric, Electrify energizes the target so that every move is infused with so much energy that it would basically be classified as an Electric move. Imagine a water gun that actually shocks you. Ha! Ion Dolge, 
or in Japanese, plasma shower, is the move where the user disperses electrically charged particles, which changes normal type moves into electric type moves. It's similar to electrify, however, it's much less of an overcharging of everything, and more so just makes all normal moves electric. But how? Well, similarly to how electrify works, ion dolge must do exactly what its name means. It covers its target in charged ions, and thus they would be able to create the difference needed to make their otherwise normal attacks charged with electricity. Plasma Fists is where Zera Aura attacks with electrically charged fists. This move changes normal type moves to electric type moves. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's a plasma covered fist that is so covered in plasma that it then changes all of Zera Aura's normal attacks into electric attacks. Same thing as the last move, just it gets to punch before it because it's special. Ooh. But you know what? I've said plasma and such a lot this episode, but I haven't really explained it in terms that you can relate to electricity that well. So, lightning and sparks are plasma. Electric currents are not. When sparks jump through the air, it happens because the air is being converted into plasma, the fourth state of matter. Plasma glows with light, is terrifically hot, and is an electrical conductor. Remember, air is a resistor, so whenever sparks leap out of wires, it's as if the spark is adding to the wire, making it longer. When thunderstorms produce lightning, it's the same as creating vast conductive towers in the air. The air itself is being converted into a conductor or wire to the ground. In other words, sparks are not technically electricity. Instead, they're hot conductive gas particles that move electricity, the plasma streamers. Simple, complicated stuff. Aura Wheel is the signature move of Morpeko, the hamster guinea pig thing. You know that pop culture media thing where you use hamsters on a hamster wheel to generate electricity? Yeah, it's that. Morpeko runs on an electric wheel and attacks while also raising its speed. The type of the move changes based on Morpeko's current form. It goes between dark and electric, and that's why it specifies it's an aura attack. When dark, it's Morpeko's dark aura manifesting itself into the shape of a wheel. Otherwise, it's just a wheel made of electricity. Now then, fancy moves. With Gigavolt Havoc, the user hits the target with a powerful electric current collected by its Z power. Imagine the power of a Z move. Now translate it perfectly to electricity. Huge current. Remember, it's the current that kills, not the voltage, but a Gigavolt. How even, like, is that a real number? Oh, it's a billion volts. Okay, so that means the other Z move, 10 million volt thunderbolt, has nothing on this thing. This move is where the user, Pikachu wearing a cap, powers up a jolt of electricity using its Z power and unleashes it. Critical hits land more easily. But still, while volts aren't everything, that's only seven zeros. A gigavolt has nine. But anyway, that's way better than the just regular attack thunderbolt, which has the Japanese name 10,000 volts. That's chump change. But I'm sure gigavolt havoc would absolutely be destructive to the natural environment. Heck, with enough amps and current and all that, it could possibly disrupt the Earth's own magnetic field, or at the very least, it would disrupt wildlife for miles around it, as many creatures can sense the magnetic field and use it for directions. So just all of a sudden, north is south, and then it's west, and then it's north, and then it's south, and they just, they just spin. All the animals are just spinning. It's a good thing this isn't real. Now then, it's time for some moves by big Pokemon. Max Lightning. It's just a lot of lightning, really. Wow. It's so much lightning that it makes the terrain electrically charged. I don't even have to explain that. We've covered it all. G-Max Volt Crash is the move that Gigantamax Pikachu uses. This move paralyzes opponents, the whole party even. And that's just because it's big, like really big. Pikachu is fat again. Gigantamax Toxtricity uses G-Max Stun Shock. On top of dealing damage, this move poisons or paralyzes opponents. It's potentially inspired by the fact that there are various diseases and bacteria that are capable of causing paralysis. So it's sort of poisoning and paralyzing you. It happened to me once, Bell's Syndrome, an infection that causes local paralysis for a few days. I had to tape my eye shut. Now then, have you seen enough Pikachu and Pikachu accessories yet? Because here's some more. Stoked Spark Surfer is radical. Yeah! Ratical! It's Alolan Raichu's signature move. After obtaining Z-Power, Alolan Raichu attacks the target with full force. This move leaves the target with paralysis. I mean, both Ride the Lightning and A Wave of Electricity are phrases, so why not make the surfboarding mouse ride an electrical wave? It's it's good. But then we have Zippy Zap, not to be confused with Zing Zap. Zippy Zap is the signature move of partner Pikachu. It bursts electricity at high speed. It always goes first, and always lands a critical hit. How unfair. But Zing Zap, now that's a move. It's learned by Pinkerchin and Togedemaru, the spiky ball zappers. With this move, a strong electric blast crashes down on the target, giving an electric shock. This may also make the target flinch. Oh man, how cool is a lightning bolt for the eighth time? 
Huh, I, I can imagine the boardroom meeting in Game Freak. Okay, what do we electric types do? And then the eager intern says, they shoot lightning bolts and paralyze. And everyone's like, yes, yes. And then the intern says, what if they flinched instead? So they fire the intern, but then still use the idea because they forgot to actually make a new move. Buzzy buzz! Who comes up with these names? And how would that make me think electric type? That sounds like a B. I guess machines sometimes buzz. But anyway, this is the move for partner Eevee. And wow, who would have thought? It shoots a jolt of electricity to attack the target. It also leaves the target with paralysis. The way it works, you ask? Well, Eevee has some sort of taser that it's got locked away in its fluffy tail. I mean, Floaty Float used balloons, so these partner Pokemon aren't afraid of cheating with all their special tools. Then, continuing with the bad names, we have Pika Papal. I mean, really, Pikachu needs another signature move. I'm surprised there isn't a game called Pokemon Pikachu where you only catch and fight Pikachu. No other creatures exist in the world, though I guess that may not work, as a Pokemon Pikachu is already a thing. I have one. Mm. But Pika Papau. Oh man, here you go. The more Pikachu loves its trainer, the greater the move's power. It never misses. Oh boy, more anime trash. That's what I want in my strategic turn-based RPGs. And last, and certainly least, Catastropika. It's like... <sighs> It's like they saw a word with the letter P and were amazed that a word could have the letter P and it not be Pikachu. The user, Pikachu, surrounds itself with the maximum amount of electricity using its Z power and pounces on its target with full force. What even is the maximum amount of electricity? Like what, is, what does that mean? The maximum that a Pikachu can hold? The maximum that can be physically put in a space? Like, we don't know what the maximum amount of electricity is yet. Science hasn't reached this far. What even is a catastrophe? Maybe maybe that can help. Well, the definition of a catastrophe is a sudden event that causes either great destruction or suffering. And well, it certainly is. So, what are your thoughts? Let me know down below and never stop using your noggin. And honestly, don't think I hate Pikachu or anything. I actually really like Pikachu, but I just want more other Pokemon to have nice things too, you know? Anywho, tally-ho, I've gotta go. And, uh, I don't know, charge some batteries? <laughs>